Witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie z Canberry. Bardzo się cieszę, że mogę być z Państwem w Lublinie, przynajmniej w ten sposób. I dziękuję bardzo i organizatorom, i Panu Bogu. I przepraszam, ale będę mówić po angielsku. I want to start with by explaining the title of my talk, which may seem strange. What is ethnosiology? What is ethnochristianity? Well, by ethnosiology, I mean theology, especially Christian theology, seen through the prism of a particular language and culture. And by ethnochristianity, I mean Christian faith, seen by the prism, through the prism of a particular language and culture. Many languages in the world, for example, Polish, Russian, and English, bear an imprint of Christianity which has been for many centuries the religion of most of the speakers. In such languages, the words that speakers customarily use to refer to God, Jesus, and Mary, Jesus' mother, are integral uh, and culturally revealing part of the vocabulary. And this is very seldom recognized in the literature on these languages and uh, on the cultures associated with them. So to give you an example, uh, the multi-volume uh, dictionary of the Russian language, published by the Soviet Academy of Science, Swabai Ruska Vojazyka, includes an entry on the word Bagarodica, uh, literally God-bearer. And it says Bagarodica, Christianska religii nazwanie Matiri Christa. In Christian religion, this is what the mother of Christ is called. But in fact, I think the concept of Bagarodica uh, the woman who gave birth to God because she gave birth to Jesus and Jesus is God. It's not only part of the Christian religion, but it's also part of the Russian language because of this word, Bagarodica. So the concept is indeed part of Christian faith, and it was solemnly endorsed uh, as such um, in the Greek form Theotokos by the Ecumenical Council in Ephesus in AD. For, uh, 431. But it is uh, not part of English, as it is a part of uh, Russian. And characteristically, the large Russian English dictionary, Rusko Angliski Swabal, edited by Smiritsky, glosses Bagarodica as uh, the Virgin, Our Lady, and thus showing that it can find no literal Eng English translation, English equivalent for Bagarodica. So in this talk, I will not be mm, looking at Russian, but rather I will compare English and Polish. My main thesis is, is that judging by the evidence of linguistic usage, speakers of Polish don't relate to God, Jesus, and Mary, Jesus' mother in the same way as the speakers of English do. And these different relationships are reflected in words and phrases in which uh, which Polish and English provide their speakers with, as usual customary ways of referring to God, Jesus, and Mary. And the differences that I'm talking about do not depend on differences of faith as such, but on differences in culture. And in particular, English-speaking Catholics do not hold beliefs different from Polish-speaking Catholics. But the faith is colored in each case by the religious culture reflected in and transmitted by some key words and collocations. I will also seek to demonstrate that different attitudes to God, Jesus, and Mary, embedded in English and in Polish, can be identified with clarity and precision in the meanings, <laughs> if the meanings of these key words and explications are uh, explicated through the natural semantic meta language or NSM. Uh, this talk will be devoted primarily to the customary ways of referring to Mary, Jesus' mother, in English and in Polish. But uh, before turning to this main theme of my talk, I would like to say something more briefly um, about the customary ways of referring to God and to Jesus in Polish and in English. So section two is the ways of referring to God in Polish and in English. 
to talk about customary uh, ways of referring to God in colloquial Polish, I want to draw on my own recent experience of writing a book for small children about God. I first wrote this book in English and then tried to translate it into Polish. In English, this book is called God is Good. Uh, and the subtitle says, The Nicene Creed Unpacked for Kids. And the title of the first chapter is simply God. But when translating this little book from English into Polish, I realized that the Polish title of the book could not be the literal equivalent of the English title, Book Jest Dobry. And that uh, the title of the first chapter could not be the literal equivalent of the title of the English first chapter. It could not be book. God. Instead, in Polish, I had to use the phrase pan book, where pan uh, can be compared uh, can, uh, to a courtesy title. And then throughout the book, I had to render the English God as pan book rather than simply book. Uh, the word pan is used in Polish uh, to render both lord and mister. And it shares some semantic components with both these words. According to my analysis, in the phrase pan book, the word pan, with a capital P, uh, includes the semantic component, he is above us, which is also part of the meaning of the English word lord. But of course, not part of the meaning of the English word mister. In addition, however, pan, as in the phrase pan book, implies, roughly speaking, something like respect, familiarity, and good feelings. So, referring to God in the Polish book for children as pan book implies an attitude to God which the English word God does not convey. And as I wrote in an earlier study in which I compared ways of addressing God in Polish and in German, Pan book is almost a household phrase in Polish, uh, and it's saturated with somewhat naive popular piety, whereas Herrgott in German belongs to a much higher uh, register of German. I also noted in this earlier study that the attitude, I quote, the attitude to God embedded in the Polish vocative phrase Panie Boże is nothing like that conveyed in the English phrase uh, Lord God and is in fact much closer to dear God than to Lord or Lord God. In this earlier study, uh, I was comparing Polish and German, uh, Polish and German ways of addressing God rather than uh, ways of referring to God. But much what, of what I said there about addressing God applies also to ways of referring to God. Uh, much of what was said about the phrase Panie Boże applies also to the nominative phrase Pan Bóg. Uh, I have also discussed Polish way of addressing God uh, in a comparative perspective in another article written in Polish and entitled in Polish as Polskie Słowo Boże for the Perspective Porównawcze. In today's talk, I'm not focusing on Polish ways of addressing God, but rather on Polish ways of referring to God. But many points uh, which I made uh, in those earlier articles apply to Polish ways of referring to God too. Uh, so in my framework, that is to say in the NSM framework, these aspects can be captured by positing several semantic components for the phrase pan book, uh, additional to the explication of the word God or book itself. I will now read the explication of pan book, which is also given on the handout and on the slide. So pan book. When we think about God, we think like this. God is above us. God is above all people. At the same time, we can know God well. We think very good things about God. When we think like this, we feel something very good. Component A shows that the expression pan book conveys a certain way of thinking about God and that this way of thinking is shared by a community of believers, and the word we uh, is crucial here. Component B, shared uh, with the English word Lord, indicates something like reverence. Again, a reverence shared by a community. Component C shows that the reverence does not carry with it 
uh, a sense um, of distance, but on the contrary, is combined with something like a feeling of familiarity. Component D implies something like praise. Component E expresses very good feelings engendered by the thinking articulated in components B, C, and D. So returning now to the title of the book, God is Good, and its Polish translation, Pan Book Yes Dobry, I want to know that while from a semantic perspective the words good, uh, God and the book uh, mean exactly the same, from a pragmatic point of view, God and book are not equivalent. And this is why the word God used to refer to God in the English version of the book cannot be rendered in the Polish version simply as book. Rather, it needs to follow the most usual Polish way of referring to God as pan book, thus conveying something like, as I said, reverence, familiarity, reverence, familiarity and good feelings. And the main point which I want to emphasize here is that the customary ways of referring to God in English and in Polish are different, and that these differences can be shown with clarity and precision uh, through NSM explanations. So I'm now turning to section three, ways of referring to Jesus in Polish and in English. Uh, and I will start again with my book for young children, God is Good. In the English version of this book, chapter three is entitled Jesus. And throughout all the chapters, Jesus is referred to as Jesus. But in the Polish version, I could not refer to Jesus um, simply as Jesus. As soon as, as I started to translate chapter 3 from English into Polish, I realized that it had to be Pan Jesus rather than simply Jesus. This is how people normally refer to Jesus when speaking to children in Polish, and very often not only to children. The two phrases, Pan Jesus and Pan Book, have a great deal in common, and yet the relationship between Jesus and Pan Jesus is not exactly the same as that between Book and Pan Book. And the reason, or one of the reasons, is um, that, Jesus, that Jesus is perceived in Polish as a name, whereas Book is not. Uh, I'm talking here about the nominative form Jesus, not about the vocative form Jesu, which has a semantics of its own and a, a different, a special emotional tone. So the vocative Jesu does occur in prayers at, uh, intended for children. For example, in the popular bedtime prayer, O dobry Jesu, kładę się spać, nic mi się złego nie może stać. Mam na obronę na krzyża twego, tu mi ojca i syna i ducha świętego. And where in this prayer, Jesu is entirely at home. But in the nominative, the phrase Pan Jesus is used more widely than the bare name Jesus, and not only when talking to children, as I already mentioned. So, for example, the popular Polish poet Jan Twardowski, who was a Catholic priest, frequently used the phrase Pan Jesus in his religious poetry. And since Pan Jesus is, in a sense, the most basic colloquial way to refer to Jesus for Polish Catholics, Jesus by itself sounds rather bare in Polish and is usually avoided in spoken language. While at the same time, Pan Jesus may be avoided in written language, especially in theological publications, because it sounds somewhat naive. Uh, it's important to stress in this context that the Polish phrase Pan Jesus does not mean the same as the English phrase Lord Jesus and that the attitudes embedded in these two phrases are quite different. The difference can be dramatically illustrated with a popular Polish religious song, often sung by worshippers at Mass just before receiving the Holy Communion. And, and, and the English translation provided on the internet. So in Polish, this song starts with the phrase Pan Jezus już się zbliża and in English with the words, Jesus the Lord is coming. So in Polish, Pan Jezus już się zbliża, już puka do mych drzwi, pobiegnę go przywitać, z radości serce drży. And in English, the first stanza, uh, uh, 
It's like this, it goes like this. Jesus the Lord is coming. On my door he is knocking. To greet him I will run. A heart trembles with joy. Well, one has to be not only truly bilingual, but also truly bicultural to fully appreciate the difference in the speaker's attitude expressed in these opening lines. One with uh, Pan Jesus and the other one with Jesus the Lord. But even a modest level of bilingual competence should be enough to grasp that the phrases Pan Jesus and Jesus the Lord do not mean the same. Okay, granted, uh, Jesus, Jesus the Lord is even syntactically different from Pan Jesus. But Lord Jesus is also very different from Pan Jesus, and normally does not occur in books and prayers for young children. Well, I do not have the time here for a proper semantic analysis of these phrases, but I have tried to pinpoint some differences between them, first in informal prose and then in NSMPI explications. So the first point to note is that uh, the Polish phrase by Jesus is perceived as comparable to some extent with ordinary ways of referring to people outside the circle of the family uh, and close friends. So it brings to mind uh, phrases such as Pan Marek, Pan Michał, Pan Andrzej. Uh, that is phrases which combine a man's first name with the polite title Pan, used in Polish in most social um, interactions outside the family, uh, more, far more broadly than a Mr. is used in English. Well, in English, the title Mr. is normally combines only with a name, man's surname not with a man's first name, and thus it, com it implies considerable uh, distance. By contrast, the Polish title Pan combines readily with the first name, and indeed with an affectionate diminutive form of the name, as in Pan Jaś or Pan Stasz. Jesus in Pan Jesus is not a diminutive, but neither it is perceived as non-diminutive or anti-diminutive, as names like Stanislav or Jan are, can be. The reason is that the forms Stanislav and the or Jan do have unmarked diminutive versions, whereas Jesus does not. It is like Marek, Michal, and Andrzej, which are perceived as unmarked, neither diminutive nor non-diminutive. I have studied such differences in detail in my book, Semantics, Culture, and Cognition, which was published by Oxford University Press in uh, 1992. So against the background of the common use of names and courtesy titles in Polish, Pan Jesus sounds neither formal nor distant and is compatible with a close personal relationship, not like a family member, but perhaps like a close family friend. By contrast, the English phrase, Lord Jesus, suggests a collective perspective, a solemn occasion, and a formal setting, unlike, of course, the word mystery. It also implies a great distance and conveys something like homage and honor. Arguably, it also implies something like authority. But in Polish, the phrase Pan Jesus has no such associations. On the contrary, it implies intimacy, familiarity and closeness. And I think it also implies something like warmth, good feelings. The English phrase, Lord Jesus, does not necessarily imply warmth, or certainly not as much warmth as the Polish phrase, Pan Jesus. So I will now read the explications of Pan, the explications of Pan Jesus and Lord Jesus, which are also given on the handout and on the slide. Pan Jesus, someone, this someone's name is Jesus. We think about this someone like this. No one else is like this someone. This someone is above us. At the same time, this someone is close to us. We know this someone very well. We know very good things about this someone. We can speak to this someone. When we think like this, we feel something very good. And now, Lord Jesus. Someone, this someone's name is Jesus. We think about the someone like this. No one else is like this someone. 
the someone is above us, the someone is above all people. We know very good things about the someone. We want to do everything as the someone wants. When we think like this about the someone, we feel something good. So these explications are only provisional, and more work is needed before they can be either fully validated or amended. As they stand now, the most distinctive components of Pan Jesus are these. The someone is close to us. We know the someone very well. We can speak to the someone. And when we think like this, we feel something very good. The most distinctive uh, components of Lord Jesus are the someone is above all people, and we want to do everything as the someone wants. Again, the general point which I want to emphasize is that the differences in meaning and use between Pan Jesus and the Lord Jesus have implications for the pragmatic value of the words Jesus and Jesus used by themselves. I do not claim that Jesus and Jesus have different meanings. But since in Polish the phrase Pan Jesus is very widely used, so the bare form Jesus can be perceived as chosen in preference to Pan Jesus. And uh, therefore, as a bracketing, as it were, the distinctive semantic components of Pan Jesus. In English, on the other hand, Jesus is used by itself, is not perceived as chosen in preference to Lord Jesus, and does not uh, imply any bracketing of uh, reverential and deferential components embedded in the meaning of Lord Jesus. As a consequence, uh, Jesus can be used more widely than Jesus in Polish, even in books for young children. For example, the book uh, entitled To Know, Worship, and Love for kindergarten, uh, which is widely used, uh, it's called PrEP kindergarten, uh, which is used widely in Australian Catholic schools, and which has been repeatedly reprinted, refers to Jesus simply as Jesus, throughout. And the phrase, Lord Jesus, is used only once in a formal collective prayer, so where the leader says, we want, no, sorry, we wait for God's promise, and all say, come, Lord Jesus. So now I'm take, turning now to ways of referring to Mary. Uh, I will start with a small personal uh, vignette. At a recent birthday party in Canberra, where several fellow Catholics were present, I asked a few of them, who is your favorite saint? And two of them answered, our lady. Well, the literal Polish translation would be Nasza Pani. But I really doubt that anyone would answer this question in Polish with these words. Also, the phrase, O Pani Nasza and Pani Nasza, these phrases do occur in public prayers and hymns. But not so much in conversation, uh, birthday party conversation. One reason for this is, I think, that few speakers of Polish would think of Mary, Jesus' mother, as one of the saints. Normally in Polish, Mary is not described as saint, uh, but uh, święta, but as najświętsza, especially when it is used as a form of address in the vocative, matko najświętsza, but not only, matka najświętsza is also widely used. Uh, and it's, I think, revealing that uh, the Sydney uh, ca uh, Cathedral dedicated to Mary is called St. Mary's Cathedral. Whereas the full name of, the, of its counterpart in Kraków, known in colloquial Polish as Kościół Mariacki, is Kościół Niemowzięcia Najświętszej Marii Panny, literally the Church of the Assumption of the Holiest Virgin Mary. It is also revealing that the English rendering of this name in, in the Wikipedia is St. Mary's Basilica in Kraków. So on the one hand, Jesus' uh, mother is often referred to in English as simply Mary or Saint Mary, uh, as if no special reverence or devotion needed to be shown. Whereas in Polish, she is normally not referred, as, uh, referred to as Maria or Święta Maria. 
and it is felt that considerable reverence and devotion needs to be shown. But on the other hand, the reverential phrase, Our Lady, can be used in English by Catholics in ordinary conversation, whereas in Polish, the literal counterpart, Nasza Pani or Pani Nasza, would, I think, sound excessively, perhaps excessively biased in a similar context. It is true that in English, too, Catholics uh, sorry, it is true that in English too, when Catholics answer the question about their favorite saint with the phrase Our Lady, well, sometimes they seem to do it with a little smile in a, and in a somewhat apologetic tone, as if they too felt that this could sound a little bit too pious or too Catholic, because the phrase is normally not used in English uh, by Protestants. But they may feel that um, they have no alternative, because the neutral way of referring to Mary, uh, Jesus' mother, as simply Mary, expresses no devotion and no reverence at all. And this may, some of them feel, not be not quite right either. So the choice appears to be between the totally neutral as to a secular answer, Mary, and the highly reverential and Catholic sounding our Lady. In Polish, the situation is quite different. The word Maria, the equivalent of Mary, is not used about Jesus' mother at all, except in traditional prayers, such as Zdrowaś Mario, Hail Mary, evocative. Uh, the special name uh, reserved by Polish speakers for Jesus' mother, Maria, is not used for anyone else, and thus it implies uniqueness as well as a reverence and devotion. If asked in conversation, who is your favorite saint, Polish Catholics may reply, perhaps with an apologetic smile, uh, Matka Boska, literally Divine Mother, which is totally unsayable in English, uh, but about Mary. But uh, they would be unlikely, I think, to reply Maria. The form Maria is used widely in church singing and in collective prayer. It is also used by theologians and others writing on religious topics in contexts where, in English, the neutral form Mary would be used. And quite remarkably, I think, the Polish version of the Catechism of the Catholic Church refers to Mary reverently as Maria, whereas the English version refers to her simply as Mary. To my mind and to my ear, this represents a significant difference between the two versions of Catholicism, that embedded in English and that embedded in Polish. Uh, and I need to emphasize again that the choice of the reverend form Maria over the neutral Maria is not due to the Polish translators of the Catechism uh, personal devotion to Mary. The point is that there is simply no neutral way to refer uh, to Jesus' mother in Polish, as there is in English, with the word Mary. The common name Maria is simply never used about her uh, outside of traditional prayers and hymns. In public prayers, hymns and church singing, the form Maria is only present. Uh, as for private prayer and private reflection, Polish Catholics may be more likely to use the phrase Matka Boża than either Maria uh, uh, with its emphasis on how we think and feel or uh, Matka Boska. Matka Boska is a phrase which, the non which non believers can also use even though it is not totally devoid of religious sentiment either. And here I'd like to quote the Polish uh, poet Jan Lechon, who was not a Christian believer, but um, he, when he wrote about the Polish Black Madonna of Częstochowa, known in Polish as Matka Boska Częstochowska, she is one, w którą wierzy nawet taki, który w nic nie wierzy. The one in whom even those who don't believe in anything believe. My guess is that in private prayer, many Polish Catholics tend to use the appellation Matka Boża, perhaps, rather than Matka Boska, where Matka Boża is an adjective defined from Bóg, God. 
but different in register and I think more loving than Matkawoska. The monumental Polish uh, language dictionary edited by Witold Doroszewski uh, describes both boski and boży as adjective derived from the noun book, God. But it also shows that the collocations of these two adjectives are quite different in relation to Matka Boska and Matka Boża. I will only mention for the moment the fact that the phrase uh, Statua Matki Boski, a statue of Matka Boska, can be used by both believers and non believers. Whereas Statua Matki Boże, a statue of Matka Boża, would normally be used only by believers because it clearly implies, I think, faith and devotion. I would also like to mention the following observation, that in a large volume of um, collected poems by Catholic priest Jan Twardowski, whom I have already mentioned, uh, the title is Nie przyszedłem pana nawracać, the most common ways of referring to Mary, Jesus' mother, are Matka Boska and Matka Boża. Literally something like the Divine Mother, as I said, unsayable in English. And the most uh, common way of addressing her is Matko Najświętsza, literally Holiest Mother. Twardowski's, Jan Twardowski's religious poetry is utterly down to earth. It keeps very close to everyday language. So his frequent use of these three phrases is very significant. It is also significant that he refers to the words Matko Najświętsza as the simplest way of speaking. In his own words, I quote, he prays, żebym nie zamykał się w bunkrze poezji, sorry, w budce poezji, żebym nie zamykał się w budce poezji, kiedy trzeba mówić najprościej o Matce Najświętszej. Literally, this means I pray not to close myself off in a box of poetry when there is ne a need for someone to speak about the holiest mother in the simplest of words. Well, I, can, I think one can hardly speak of Mary Jesus' mother in this way in English. And if someone did, these would not be seen as the simplest of words. Uh, so let me add here, um, a personal testimony, my own personal testimony as a bilingual and bicultural speaker of English and Polish. In church in Canberra, I'm immersed in the ethno-linguistic world in which referring to Jesus' mother as either Mary or Our Lady is common. In my, own, in my head and in conversations with Polish friends, I think of the same person as Matka Boska. And when I want to mention her in conversation with English-speaking friends in Canberra, I'm stuck. I feel I cannot say Mary. But I feel unable to say Our Lady either. So for example, during my regular theology discussions, uh, with a, one with a church-based group once a month and with a, a university-based group once a fortnight, I experience a real difficulty in referring to Jesus' mother. I'm literally lost for words. For a linguist, and especially a semanticist, all these and other similar effects of linguistic usage raise tantalizing questions about the differences in meaning between Polish terms such as Maria, Matka Boska, Matka Boża, and Najświętsza Maria Panna. They also raise tantalizing questions about the differences in meaning, in meaning between English phrases like Our Lady, Blessed Virgin Mary, and Saint Mary, as in the name of the cathedral. For an ethno-linguist and a student of culture, such facts raise questions about different religious cultures reflected in different languages. Why is it that Mary and Saint Mary are acceptable in English, whereas Maria and Święta Maria are, generally speaking, not acceptable in Polish? And why is Our Lady acceptable in conversational usage uh, of English-speaking Catholics, whereas Nasza Pani or Pani Nasza is not part of the conversational usage of Polish Catholics, although it, certainly, it is certainly part of the language of public worship, religious hymns, litanies, and collective prayers. 
Uh, why is it that in some contexts it is acceptable, even normal, to refer to Jesus' mother in English as a Blessed Virgin Mary? Whereas it is not acceptable in Polish, in similar contexts, to refer to her as Błogosławiona Dziewica Maria, or even Błogosławiona Panna Maria. Needless to say, differences of this kind are not restricted to Polish and English. Uh, when one compares words and collocations ordinarily used in Polish with those used in Russian, significant differences uh, also come to light. So my point is, again, that such differences are not trivial and accidental, but have deep roots in the historical uh, religious cultures of the speakers. And further, my claim is uh, that such references can be articulated very clearly through the, the cross-translatable vocabulary of the natural semantic meta-language. And that, 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 and that by making these differences explicit, we can come to a better understanding of the cultural perspectives reflected in some key uh, religious expressions, mm, which are transmitted through them across generations. So let me now show you at least one or two and uh, some explications relating to Mary, and there are more on the handout. I will not seek to explain at this stage how the differences between individual components of the explications account for the differences in their usage. I don't have the time here for that either. I will only mention for the moment that some of these words and phrases can be used both by believers and non-believers, whereas some others belong only to the language of believers and that some of them reflect a collective we perspective, whereas some others are more compatible with private prayer and religious reflection. To show that these explications are cross-translatable, I have included in the set the Polish version of the first of, uh, one, that of Maria. So I will now read the explication of Maria, first in English and then in Polish, and you have them uh, these, uh, on, this slide, on this slide, Maria. Someone like, not like anyone else, a woman not like any other woman, the mother of Jesus. We call her Maria. We don't call anyone else like this. We think about her like this. No one else is like her. She's very close to God. When we think about her like this, we feel something very good. And in Polish, <coughs> Maria. Ktoś jak nikt inny, kobieta jak żadna inna. Matka Jezusa. Nazywamy ją Maria. Nie nazywamy tak nikogo innego. Myślimy o niej tak. Ona jest bardzo blisko Pana Boga. No, ona jest bardzo blisko Boga. Sorry. Kiedy o niej tak myślimy, czujemy coś bardzo dobrego. There I will skip the other explications and just a few very brief closing remarks. Uh, the, there is an acclaimed recent book by a Catholic theologian, Brand Pitre, entitled Jesus and the Jewish Roots of Mary, 2018. Uh, and in this book, the author makes three points about Mary, which are all very relevant to the main topic of my talk. So I quote from this book. The New Testament, the New Testament portrait of Mary as the Virgin Mother of Emmanuel and the Queen Mother of the Kingdom of God provides us with the biblical foundations for three central but controversial, controversial ancient Christian beliefs and practices. First, Mary's identity as Mother of God, Greek, Greek Theotokos. Honoring, uh, second, honoring Mary and asking her for intercession. And three, the differences between the difference between the veneration of Mary and the worship of God, end of quote. So to start with uh, Peter's third point, none of the explications presented here uh, relating to Mary includes the component which I have assigned here and in other work to God. You are above everyone. You are above everything. There's no above in our explications relating to Mary. Instead, the various explications proposed here for words and phrases uh, referring to Mary include the far more limited components. You are above us all. 
So above us, well, yes, not above all people. This in itself accounts, it seems to me, for the difference between the worship of God and the veneration of Mary, as reflected in all the expressions discussed here. And turning uh, to the differences between Polish and English, Mary's identity as birth giver of God, the Tokos, is particularly highlighted in Polish in the phrases which I have mentioned, Matka Polska and Matka Boża. Uh, as already mentioned, in comparison with the Russian word Bagarodica, the Polish phrases Matka Polska and Matka Boża, and also Matka Najświętsza, emphasize in addition her intercessory role. They present her as not only the mother of Jesus, and therefore the mother of God, but also as the mother of us all. The English phrases Our Lady and the Blessed Virgin Mary, which appear to be specifically Catholic, uh, reflect the veneration of Mary without highlighting her intercessory and maternal role as the mother who wants to help all people. I believe that this divergence in ways of talking about Mary between English and Polish is undoubtedly related to the impact of the Reformation on the English language. Well, adapting Wittgenstein, one could say that there is here a whole cloud of history condensed in a few drops of language. 